Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on taking our data from our options scene and we connected this data and our data manager to our battle scene. And then that way we can configure our game settings and then apply them inside our battle scene. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to a source code up to this point, as well as clear source code for this video. There will also be links to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now that we've wrapped up our initial implementation of our title and our option scene, and we've actually connected all of this to our data manager and to our various classes, before we move on to our next section of tools, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to address some bugs that have been discovered while testing the code, and that we need to go ahead and get addressed. And so we have four different bugs we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at, and we're going to go ahead and get code implemented to fix these. Uh, so our first, uh, a few of these bugs are mostly tied to our battle scene, and so two of them are tied to our health bars. And so one of them is when our health bar, when our battle scene starts, if our monster is at partial health and not fully healed, uh, so later on once we have support for persisting this data, we're not actually updating our health bar value properly. Uh, so we can see in the screenshot here uh, where our monster starts out at 20 out of 25 health, our health bar still shows it's fully healed instead of being partially filled. Uh, so what we'll have to do is we'll need to go ahead and address that when we create our instance of our battle monster. And so another one for our health bar is tied to our animation and the duration of that animation. So we originally made duration optional. However, because of how JavaScript works, if you pass the value zero, this gets evaluated as false. And so because it's evaluated as false, our animation is going to go ahead and use our default values. So we just need to add a safety check to make sure that this uh, is addressed. And then so one more bug tied to our battle scene is when our battle scene first starts, uh, we're not fully blocking our player's input. And so what can happen as soon as that battle starts up, uh, we can get weird effects like this where our multiple text game objects are showing at the same time. And instead we actually wanna block our input until we expect it from our player in our player input state. And one more bug we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is inside our world scene, when we handle a player input for our movement, uh, we have an issue where we currently have a callback for once our movement is completed, so then that way we're aware of that in our world scene. However, we have cases where our player game object updates, but it doesn't actually move. And so an example of this is we don't have a callback for when our direction changes. And so uh, in this example here, when we're facing our sign, our player was originally facing left, but then they faced up in our callback, our player didn't actually move, and so we still have our old state for which direction our player is facing. And so we're just going to head to add a callback for this, so then that way we're aware of it in our world scene, and we can handle it appropriately. Alright, so to go ahead and start addressing this, we're going to go ahead and start with our battle scene bugs. Uh, what we'll do is let's jump over to our code. Alright, so to start addressing our bugs with our battle scene, uh, what we'll do is let's go ahead and open up our preload scene, and let's jump right into where we start our scene, and we'll go ahead and start our battle scene right off the bat. And so the first bug we're going to take a look at will be our player input one, uh, where once our scene starts, if we just press the space bar, we can see right away our text game objects for our battle menu show up, and our text for informing the player a monster has appeared. And so to go ahead and fix this, let's go ahead and jump over to our battle scene. And so to go ahead and fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lock our input right after we create our controls instance. And so what we'll do is we'll do our controls. Uh, so this is in our create method at the very bottom. Uh, so right after we create our controls, we're going to go ahead and do lock input. We're going to set this to true. And so what this is going to do, it's going to update our controls class to say, hey, we want to block all input. And then what we can do is in our update method, we can just add a simple if statement. And we'll do if our controls is input locked is true, we're going to go ahead and return early. And so we won't actually handle any player input. All right, so now that we lock in our input, what we need to do is down in our battle state machine, after our enemy monster in the health bar appears, we want to go ahead and unlock it, so then that way we can press our space key to interact with our scene. And so let's go ahead and look for our pre-battle info state. And what we want to do is, right before we start updating our info pane, we're going to go ahead and unlock our controls. So we're going to do this controls, and we'll do lock input, and we're going to go ahead and set this equal to false. So then what we should be able to do is when our scene refreshes and we start pressing our space key, nothing should happen. But then once our text shows up that the monster has appeared, we go ahead and start showing our player a monster like we expect. 
All right, so for our next bug, what we're gonna do is let's come back to our preload scene and let's go ahead and jump into our options scene. And what we'll go ahead and do is let's turn off our battle animation and we'll update our text speed so then that way it's faster. And we'll go ahead and close. And then let's come back to our battle scene. So for our health bar bugs, uh, the first one we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and tackle when our player monster isn't at full health. And so to do this, let's go ahead and come to our battle scene. And so at the very top in our create method where we create our monsters, let's go ahead and update our player monster to go ahead and have 20 HP when the battle starts. And so we'll see right away that we have 20 out of 25, but our health bar is still full. And so what we're going to want to do is let's jump over to our battle monster class. And so what we're going to want to do is when we create our instance of our health bar, we're going to want to go ahead and update our display value. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come down to our constructor and after we create our health bar components and so what we're going to do is we're going to reference our protected health bar and on our health bar we're going to go ahead and set call our set meter percentage animated method and what we want to do is we're going to take our current health and we want to divide it by this and then our max health and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and skip our animation uh, when we first do this because we don't need to animate it when the battle starts this so we're going to do skip battle animations and we're going to say true so now when our scene starts we'll see now our monster's health bar actually has the correct value uh when we start our battle all right and so for our other bug that's tied to our health bar what we can do is if we set that skip battle animations to false and if we go ahead and set our duration if we go ahead and set this to zero, we'll see when the battle starts, our animation still plays, even though we set our duration to be zero. And just to validate that's working, what we'll do is we're going to set this to two seconds, so it's a little bit longer. And we'll see now when the scene starts, our animation is still playing. So we know our duration's working, uh, so if we do like a value of one, it should be so quick we don't notice it. But if we do do that zero value, it's being evaluated as false, and so the animation is still playing. All right, so to go ahead and fix this, let's jump over to our health bar class. And what we want to do is down in our set meter percentage animated method, when we check for our options and we check for our duration, we just need to go ahead and modify this logic here. All right, so what we want to do is for our logic, when duration is provided, we want to go ahead and set and use that value, otherwise do a fallback. And so in our fallback, what we want to do is we need to make sure that duration is if it's set to zero, then we need to go ahead and use the zero value. And because zero can be evaluated to false, what we're gonna do is in our or statement, we're just gonna do or our options duration is equal to zero, then we're gonna go ahead and use our ternary operator and we're gonna say if it's equal to zero, then we're gonna fall back to using zero. Otherwise, if it's any other, otherwise, if it's not defined, then we're gonna go ahead and use our default of one second. So now what should happen is in our battle scene, if we press our spacebar with our zero set, we can see right away that our animation is not playing. All right, and so for our last bug, let's go ahead and close out of our various files. And in our preload scene, let's jump over to our world scene. And so what we need to do is we just need to enhance our character class to also support a callback for when our direction is changed. And so what we're going to do is let's jump over to our base character class and let's come up to our constructor. And so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and just create another optional callback that we can provide when we create an instance of our class. And so what we'll do is we're just going to go and copy this property here for our sprite grid movement callback. And we're going to go ahead and update the name and we're just going to call this sprite changed direction callback. And so for this callback, we want it to be optional, just like our other one. And so what we'll do is we'll add a new property to keep track of this callback. And so we're going to go ahead and copy our sprite, grid, our sprite grid movement finish callback. And we will go ahead and just grab that new value that we have in our config. And we'll still make that protected. And then what we can do is down in our constructor, if that value is provided, then we want to go ahead and set it. So with our new property, we're just going to go ahead and set that value equal to our config. Then what we want to do is down in our move sprite method, uh, we're just going to check to see if the direction has changed for our character. And if it has, we'll go ahead and call our callback. And so what we'll do is before we set our direction, 
I'm just going to make a new temporary variable and call this changed direction. And what we'll do is we're just going to check if our direction does not equal the direction that was provided, then we'll have our Boolean value. So if it doesn't equal it, it'll be set to true. If it is the same, then we'll go ahead and set it equal to false. Then what we can do is after we set our direction, but before we check if it's a blocking tile, we're just going to go ahead and call our callback. And so what we'll do is if we've changed direction, then what we want to do is check to see if our callback exists. And so if our sprite change direction callback exists, so if it doesn't equal undefined, then we want to go ahead and call that method. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this here, go ahead and paste it. We'll go ahead and invoke our callback. All right, and I'm just going to add some spacing here. All right, so now with our new callback, what we need to do is jump over to our world scene and we create our player instance. What we want to do is go ahead and provide this callback so we can listen to it. So what we'll do is we'll go to new player. And so after we do our sprite grid movement callback here, what we'll do is we'll do sprite change direction callback. We're going to set that equal to a new callback. And inside here, we're going to call a new method that we've not created yet. And we're just going to call this handle player direction update. And then what we can do is let's come down to the bottom of our class and let's go ahead and add in that new private method. All right, then inside this method, what we'll want to do is we'll want to update our data in our data manager. So what we'll do is let's come up to our handle player movement update method. And inside our method, uh, this is where we were originally setting our direction. So instead of doing it here, we're going to go ahead and just move that logic to our new callback. And what we're going to do just to validate everything is working, let's just do a console log and we're going to do test. All right, so to test, if we come over to our browser, if we go ahead and open up our developer console, if we move our character to a new direction, we see our callback is invoked. But if we keep moving in that same direction, our callback is not called. And so this allows us to handle cases where, like right now, our player is facing to the left. If we press up, our player doesn't move, so our other callback was never called. But this new callback is invoked, and then we persist that data. All right, we'll go ahead and clean up our console log. All right, and so real quick, what we'll do is we'll just jump back to our preload scene and let's go ahead and revert our change so we go back to our title scene. All right, and real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up some of our data. Uh, so inside our Battle Monster class, uh, when we set our initial health bar percentage, what we're going to do is we're going to revert this back to true and we don't need to set our duration since we're going to be skipping it. Uh, then in our battle scene, let's go ahead and reset the HP for our player monster to be back to 25. All right, so with those various changes, we've now addressed our four bugs. All right, with that, that actually brings our video to an end. In our next video, uh, before we jump over to add new functionality to our game, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some tools and helpful utility functions uh, that you can use while developing your game. And so this is going to make it easier to get immediate feedback when you're working with game objects and to move them around your scene uh, seamlessly. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send links on your screen now.